Welcome to Matters Financial, geopolitical from a frontier. Thank you for stopping by. Um, went back to our fantastic weekend of the Masai Mara, and uh, we got there just before the huge uh, herds of wildebeest arrived. Sixty thousand got there by the time we arrived, and total number that will come is 1.5 million, and they're probably there now. Just to give you an idea, I took this photograph of these wildebeest going down to the river and then bailing out and rushing off again. It must be a pretty scary experience. These ones bailed at the time. And then we've got two little video clips. One, uh, a small one, which is of us being immersed in this herd of wildebeest. Um, and uh, the second one is a series just of the animals that we saw during that visit, uh, one of whom was a very famous lion called Notch. I'll put up his photograph. He is variously known as the Lion King. And uh, he has three sons. And he was courting his maid. And uh, we glimpsed him courting her. I'd never seen such raw power in my life before. Point of fact, they tell me the gorillas are equally powerful, if not more so. Bear in mind, the gorillas probably twice his weight. It was a great pleasure interviewing the deputy CEO of Deloitte East Africa, Joe Eschen, yesterday. He came from Ghana in the 1990s. He had a choice of jobs between Ghana, uh, Kenya, uh, Europe, and the States. And uh, this is in the 90s, and he chose Kenya. I said to him, he must be one of the first of the returning Africans. I like to consider myself a later one, but I only came in 2005. Fed doves won't be able to rule the roost forever. And uh, that's always the risk, isn't it? They've been doing nothing for months on end. And they wake up one morning and decide today is the day. And the economic data is signaling that they should have moved a little while ago. I was downstairs um, yesterday evening and I saw my Hannah playing upstairs on the veranda and I took a photograph of her. And she's so grown up now, I must admit. Such a pleasure. Hillary Clinton, Clinton tweeted history and uh, this photograph, and indeed, it's a pretty historical thing. Um, there seems to be a visceral hatred on one side for the Clintons. And, uh, you know, frankly, there have been some ins instances where I think she's flown very fast and loose and close to the wind. Uh, the email saga, you know, anyone else would have been fired, frankly. Um, a, 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 an attempt at cattle futures trading, which was extraordinary, extraordinarily successful. But overall, I think she's the better choice. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas by Hunter S. Thompson. I just love the photograph of him. And of course, his famous quote, the H, there is no honest way to explain it because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. Political Reflections, Bill Clinton made a passionate speech, told America why he chose Hillary Clinton and why America should too. I asked myself, is it going to be enough? Because I think Trump has a real chance. Life in the real world is complicated and real change is hard, Bill said. Uh, then talking of Hillary's reputation, cartoons are easy to absorb. Talking about when he first met her, look, if you're going to keep staring at me, we might as well know each other's name of Bill Clinton on meeting Hillary. He really is uh, the epitome, the essence of political charisma, just like Mick Jagger. If you have a second, go and listen to Miss You, which is a fantastic song. Has that in bucket loads as well. I'll put up a photograph that I like of Clinton and another one of Mick Jagger when he was much younger. Next, US President odds Clinton Trump, and of course, it's two thirds in favor of Clinton, 66%. But then, you know, all of us remember that just before the vote came in from Brexit, it was 81% for Remain. 
Putin Erdogan mend ties as post coup Turkey turns towards Russia. Article in Bloomberg, but I've been saying that, I think, or tweeting that for a number of days. Erdogan was pivoting to Russia. Turkey received unconditional support from Russia over the coup attempt, Foreign Minister Mevlut Kafosoglu said in an interview. Um, and uh, this pivot confirms once again why I think Vladimir Putin is a geopolitical grandmaster, as I wrote in October 2015. The Canadian Prime Minister, who's terribly, he's got this wonderful image, good-looking fellow as well, looking for the next generation of Canadian leadership, become a PM Youth Council member. This caught my attention from the Sultan of Sokoto, if I'm not mistaken, was the central bank governor in Nigeria, and indeed Africa in general is a leader in the Muslim world, with more Muslims in Africa than the Arab world. It's an interesting point. As the world experiences record temperatures, these places are seeing the biggest spikes. This is from WEF. This is one of the two attackers who slipped the throat of an elderly priest in a church in France, has been named as Adel Kamiche. It is appalling, and I don't know what to say. Yield on the Japanese tenure approaching minus 0.3%. It's extraordinary what's going on in the Japanese yield curve. Let's move on to the currency markets. Euro playing around with one ten the figure. Currently one ten oh one. Dollar index ninety seven twenty. Japanese yen, which has been all over the shop today, one oh five forty three. Swissy point nine nine three nine. Pound uh, toying with one thirty one one thirty one oh seven. Aussie. Let's see what that's doing. It's 0.7484. We've been around here for a few days, actually. Uh, India rupee 67.165. Uh, South Korean one eleven thirty five thirty three. Um, Brazil real 327.74. That remains firm. Egyptian pound 8.88. But remember, the black market rate has blown out. South African rand. Now, that's doing pretty well. 14.2868. This is key resistance, 14.15 to 14. A Bank of Japan mega surprise could come even without boosting stimulus. In the roulette game of Bank of Japan policy forecasting, most players are betting on Governor Haruhiko Kuroda to double down on some or all of his current three main policy tools on Friday. If he follows through on those calls, that could mark the first time that Kuroda, former head of currency policy of the finance ministry, would fail to surprise market participants. He unleashed a much bigger framework than anticipated in April 2013, unexpectedly expanded it in October 2014, dumbfounded observers in January 2016 by unveiling a negative interest rate tactic that he had previously dismissed. Given the premium that the Bank of Japan chief has placed on affecting expectations in his battle to eradicate Japan's deflationary mindset, some are warning that just doing more of the same, and that's what most anticipate, won't be enough to address waning inflation trends. Uh, earlier this morning, and then we saw further movement, uh, David English tweeted the yens getting thrown all over the place. Take a look. Dollar index uh, put up a three month chart. That looks as if it might dip next couple of sessions if the Fed don't do anything. Um, but then I think it resumes its uh, objective of 100. Euro dollar, I think parity is calling once more. Gold, 1320.73, a little bit soft, but probably gets a big bounce on a no-change decision by the Fed. Crude oil, trading very poorly, can't sustain any kind of bounce. Uh, uh, WTI is at 42.67. I think it's going to end up some ways below 40. Moving to Africa, Teban Deng. Guy has been sworn in as Vice President of South Sudan, replacing Rik Machar, and that seems to have been done by the President, and I don't know how that happens, given that they belong to opposing factions. Is Mugabe facing his Waterloo, asks the Mail and Guardian. Mugabe was facing an endgame of tragic dimensions. 
This is the editor of the Zimbabwe Weekly, The Independent, said on Friday, if the war veterans join forces with the national resistance movement driven by civic groups and backed by churches and opposition parties, Mugabe, already on the ropes and hanging on to power by his fingernails, could face his Waterloo. Over the weekend, I wrote that countries like Zimbabwe feel like they're right at the edge, that edge that Hunter S. Thompson described. No honest way to explain it, because the only people who really know where it is are the ones who have gone over. African Europe on yield since Brexit. Have a look at this. Mozambique, obviously, second yield, second only to Venezuela. Angola, back around the 10% level. Kenya, in particular, at 740. Uh, there's been a bit of a bullish trend uh, as the market anticipated uh, stimulus in the, in the developed countries. South African all shares up 5.81% this year. Dollar Rand, 14.2868. As you can see, this is sort of the resistance level. Egyptian EGX30 up 7.62% this year. Um, in my piece over the weekend, I said President Buhari's King Canute like fight to maintain the price of the Naira for more than a whole year was a monstrous policy making failure, in my view. He should have devalued on his first day of taking office when his political capital was sky high. The delay was unconscionable, and the cost being exacted on the Nigerian economy has been brutal. Nigeria's uh, central bank raised the key interest rate uh, by 2% to 14%. Inflation, of course, is a multi-year high. Nigerian all share down 2.43% this year. But if you uh, translate it into dollars, it's an 11-year or 12-year low. Um, Ghana Stock Exchange is down 10.4% uh, so far this year. How to Wreck Africa's Most Promising Economy, Bloomberg. From the, even by the standards of Africa, it's been a wild ride for Mozambique. There's little sign it will end well. Blowing through more than $2 billion of borrowed money, just as the currency and the price of commodity exports plunged, has left the former Portuguese colony with near empty coffers. Its creditors, which bought debt sold by Credit Suisse and VDB, may be left holding the bag. Nor does it help that the IMF is raising questions about the government's transparency and its finances. Mozambique is not in a state of development where it can maintain a credible foothold in the global financial markets, said Jan Dane. Uh, Standard Bank once described Mozambique as the next Qatar. I did as well. I think I preceded their description in point of fact. Mozambique is now much more in debt than previously. It's about 84, 85% debt to GDP ratio. The crisis is visible on the streets and in the shopping centers of Maputo, once a haven for wealthy expats. The currency, the Metical, has lost its value, half its value against the dollar since the start of 2015, making Mozambique's hard currency debt payments more expensive. Mozambique was a nice story, is it? To Lopez, they had growth, massive gas discoveries, but it's got worse and worse. I called it the golden boy in 2014, is now the pariah, with its bonds trading at a price of 70 and a yield second only to Venezuela. Put up a graph from Mozambique Medical, a link to the article I wrote in June 2012 when everyone was so excited, and I called it Maputo Boom Town. Um, and uh, an image of the conference I attended at the Africa Rising Conference uh, when again uh, everyone was looking for uh, Maputo to take uh, its role uh, at the top of the table. Safaricom announced a special one-off dividend of 68 cents a share, promptly rallied their share price over 4% into a record high. It's up 15.64% this year. Take a look at my interview with Mr. Colin Moore that I did after his full year results. He ranks up there in the top percentile when it comes to value creation for shareholders. He is indeed the man of the moment as he has been for several 
uh, uh, several times when I've gone to pay when I've gone to visit. Nairobi all shares up 1.5 sorry rallied 1.57 percent yesterday it's down 3.27 percent this year. Nairobi NSC 20 closes a fresh 51 month closing low. Uh, we've got an epidemic of school fires. Take a look at uh, this fire, Pat St. Patrick's High School in E10, which is where David Rudisha comes from. Uh, I met with the chairman of Kenya Airways uh, yesterday um, at a very interesting function, which is looking to promote business between Latin America and uh, Kenya. So I wish, wish them all the luck. Once again, thank you for stopping by.